everyone, it's Liz here. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Sorry for the shake on the camera. Um, as promised, I thought I would make a video about my experience with C. difficile. Um, I, when I got diagnosed, I really noticed that in the UK, where I live, there's not a lot of help. Um, a lot of the... Um, websites, a lot of the uh, YouTube uh, videos on it is all either American or, or mostly American to be honest. Um, the reason I think that is, is as far as I'm aware when I was looking it up, um, the, the last resort treatment which I ended up having FMT or fecal microbiome transplant um basically has only been available in the uk as far as i know since 2015 i think um and only a select few hospitals in the uk do it so for example my hospital adam brooks did it i'm sure there's many in london because they're bigger hospitals but my transplant actually came from birmingham so i think the queen elizabeth hospital there also does it but to rewind back, um, so I was in hospital originally because my slip disc came out and I have nerve compression. It was excruciating. And they did an MRI scan because I'd also had the numb foot, as you know, if you've watched any of my other videos. Um, click up here if you have, uh, if you haven't even, <laughs> um, or to remind yourself if you have. Um, and I was on pain relief and I was supposed to be having physio, which was very slow and most of you know that it took ages and I had two weeks without and basically lost all feeling in my legs from my knees down. So I was in hospital for four weeks at my local hospital which was the worst four weeks of my life because they just didn't understand anything and they didn't really want to look into my numbness and my legs and all this. So I ended up getting moved into a, um, a ward which was for elective sur surgical patients. So like non-urgent procedures that people want to have done that are essential for them but not an emergency kind of thing. So like you'd have people who'd maybe torn a ligament three weeks before and needed surgery, like that kind of thing. Um, and the only rule was that you, it was a clean ward, which they call it, which means that you're not allowed diarrhoea in that ward because people are recovering from major surgery on their bones, ligaments, whatever, all that. Um, and on the my last three days in that hospital, um, on the Saturday, I started feeling really sick, out of nowhere. I'd been fine the entire time. Um, I hadn't eaten well because the hospital didn't cater for allergies, so I had to write down every day what I wanted. And then it was just luck if they had it. If they didn't, they'd give me something I couldn't eat and I'd starve. Um, which in itself is terrible. Um, I've been through all the complaints procedures, I've got nowhere, just an apology and um, I'm taking it further eventually when I've got the energy. Um, so basically um, I had vomiting, which I rarely get, I usually just get retching um, because my stomach's not working very well. Um, I had terrible stomach pain, like cramping and I had diarrhoea. Now I told them this, they saw I had vomiting. They saw the pain I was in, they tried to get me bomboscopam, but I can't take it because I'm on Ovabradine, which is a medication for my POTS, which is a heart-related issue, and I know you can't have boscopan on that because I once went for an MRI on my small bowel, and they were going to put IV boscopan in for some kind of thing for the contrast, and then they said, oh, you can't because you're on Ovabradine. So, so I asked for my Mabaravine, my, uh, which is what commonly you get with uh, it's an IBS medication and it's to stop spasming in your bowel so I had that and it kind of helped but I would needed it like four times a day and I needed pain relief and at that stage I was on tramadol as well and it wasn't helping but on the Monday I'd already decided to self-discharge to go to Addenbrooke's because I was getting nowhere at Hinchinbrook and I didn't think the diarrhea was anything to worry about I had quite a lot of it on the Sunday and the Monday but I was using a commode, so all the HCAs, which are healthcare assistants, I told them I had diarrhea and they took it away. And at no point did they um, 
did they quarantine me did they send a stool sample off did they do anything and in the bay i was in a bay all on my own there were like five of their empty beds but in the bay next to me there were two ladies who had an operation both of those were vomiting i don't know if they had diarrhea as well but they were vomiting quite badly and in pain so chances are they had it too um now usually the standard with c diff um is that it says that you can get it from taking lots of antibiotics and i hadn't had any antibiotics for over two months so for me it wasn't that i also have a condition called sjogren syndrome which is autoimmune um, means that my immune system attacks itself regularly and any like if i get ill like a cold or something it goes into overdrive and not only does it not really get rid of the cold but it also flares everything i get horrific gland swelling and pain behind my in my paratoid glands behind my ears all down into my jaw my face swells up like it is a bit now uh my just everything hurts my shoulders my bones my legs everything hurt a lot and it's horrible um but this i think is a factor in why i got c diff as well as being in hospital for so long because these nurses on my ward were not wearing any gloves no aprons nothing and there's people being sick so i think that's really bad um when i as soon as i got to um, Adam Brooks, I was in A&E for ages, luckily the diarrhoea had eased off, but eventually I um, went on to a place called CDU, which is Clinical Decisions Unit, and in the UK we have that, which is like a holding ward for like, you be there for 24 hours, and that's where the doctors decide whether you should stay in or go home, and it's like there's nurses on the ward, and a doctor comes to see you and all this, but all through that first night, on the Monday night, I had diarrhoea three or four times, and this is the worst bit. Bearing in mind, I was not able to walk at this stage. My legs weren't working. So I was using a commode. And I was in a bay with five other people, most of whom were asleep. I was sitting next to my bed on a commode with severe diarrhea. I mean, the sound was horrible. I feel so sorry for the people in that bay. And I think the nurses really took notice because straight away they did a stool, they sent a stool sample off. Um, and they said that they'd probably get me into a side room the next day. They didn't know where or when. Um, and that was going to be arranged. So fast forward to the next morning. Um, I saw a ton of doctors, neurologists. I had blood tests. The neurologist was amazing. That's a whole other story with my legs. But basically by two o'clock the next day, I was moved to um, a ward that is all side rooms, there's 22 side rooms and it's for um, infection and inflammation so there's people there with like diarrhea like me with infections, there's people who are on chemo who can't be in a bay, who have got low immune systems, there's people with spinal conditions, maybe they're in flare with inflammation in the spine. Basically you have your own room and you have your own bathroom, it's all en suite. Um, and it's all temperature control like people who come in and out of every room have to wear gloves aprons and sometimes masks depends um, but the only trouble is with that hospital is the tv you get free in the morning but after that it's six pound a day and i was in there with the c diff for um four weeks and with nothing else to do especially as at that time my old phone i had like four gigabytes of data so i couldn't even watch stuff online i had no option um so yeah so it was pretty depressing um but the first three days they just monitored me the diary was getting worse it eventually got green um then when i told them it was green they did another stool sample and within 24 hours they were like yeah you've definitely got c diff and they put me on metronidazole which is an antibiotic and I was on that for a week and then they said right we're keeping you here because we want to see how you are so I was off that for three two or three days I was off it over the weekends and straight away it came back I had the spasms in my stomach they're literally like being someone's put their hand inside your stomach squeezed it turned it around and taken the hand out again it's horrible it's not like period pain it's not like cramping it's different and it makes you feel really sick you don't have any appetite at all um it was horrible and it came back a little bit worse than the first time i had it so they put me on vancomycin which um is the next strongest one i think it's called something else in america um 
gives us an F. Fl flutter? Flutter F? I'm not sure what it is, but it's the same antibiotic. So I was put on that for 10 days. Uh, no, two weeks, sorry. But I spent a week in the hospital on that. And they monitored me. I was starting to eat again. I started to feel less sick, less pain, everything. So they sent me home. And I was home here for uh 10 days because um i had a week of antibiotics here felt much better because like yeah i think i'm all right and then came off the antibiotics on the monday night and on the wednesday well the tuesday i had spasms again but no diarrhea and i thought oh maybe it's just you know going slowly on the wednesday i had one bout of really bad pain and diarrhea and on the th and that was in the evening and the Thursday was fine. I was like, oh, I'm fine then. But the Thursday evening, I had loads of diarrhea, terrible pain, felt really sick. And I was like, oh my God. So late on Thursday night, about 11 p.m., my husband had to call, um, well, we were gonna call an ambulance. And I was like, well, I need to get to Addenbrooke's and I don't wanna go back to the other hospital. So we called 111, which is our out of hours, um, like medical helpline um, in the UK. and you call them up and you say what's wrong and they went through all these stupid questions like do you have chest pain do you have this which they have to do but i was just like look i've got c diff i've been in hospital for like by that stage i've been in for eight weeks like combined the first hospital and the second hospital uh and i was all nine weeks or something and i was like oh or, or was it less i don't even know how long it was now maybe like that long but um so they were like oh can you get to your nearest out of hours doctor at the hospital local hospital I was like no I'm not allowed anywhere near a hospital I'm really contagious and infectious I've got C diff but like oh okay and an out of our doctor will call you so I had this GP general practitioner doctor person call me explained it all and straight away he was like you've got to get to Adam Brooks you've got to be isolated straight away it's clear it's come back he was amazing he organized an ambulance to come and get me because that's the only way we could go because I had to go straight into the A&E, into the isolation, not into your regular entrance of A&E. So the paramedics came, they were like gloves, apron, they had a mask because for their protection, obviously. Um, I was in so much pain and got to the hospital. They were really good. They took blood straight away. I gave them the stool sample, which they didn't end up using, which I'm really confused about and I hope that it didn't go anywhere else um, uh, and then I got moved into another isolation room because it was like a holding room and um, I was in there for 10 hours um, bearing in mind this is all overnight and I didn't sleep at all because I was in pain but they were really good they got me on I had two bags of fluids really fast because I was so dehydrated my lips were chapped my tongue was dry they couldn't get a um, cannula in me it was just horrible and they gave me IV paracetamol, IV anti-nausea um, and I didn't sleep all night because I was just feeling the worst. Um, so then the next morning the doctor comes in, a new gastro doctor, I hadn't seen him before and he was lovely and he basically said, yep, yeah, it's back, we need to get you onto a ward, isolation again and I was at this point I was sobbing because I was like, I have just spent 10 days at home, which was lovely. Um, now I'm back in again for God knows how long. But they started me back on the vancomycin and they took me to a different ward, which is the infectious diseases ward, which sounds really scary because you can get people in there with really serious things like, well, obviously pneumonia and stuff like that, but they even said they'd had an Ebola patient. And I was like, um, but yeah, it was, it was weird because it was on the top floor of the hospital. But the rooms were really cold and like really high ceilings and it was all really old furnishings and there were gaps around the doors of the rooms but they were like oh this this ward is airlocked and it's pressurized so that the infection can't spread and I was like well there's like that much gap all around the door so who knows um so I spent my first two days in the isolation ward again loads of pain loads of nausea loads of diarrhea loads of IV stuff at one stage I had cannulas in me you can watch the video up here to see what happened while I went back in so there was that 
and as soon as I went back in, the next day after seeing the, saw the same gastro doctor again, he's like, yeah, we're going to do the faecal transplant because they talked about that in my first admission, uh, but it was like a last resort. And he's like, this is your third bout of C. diff. You've had one, two lots of antibiotics, the second antibiotic, the vancomycin. Obviously, as soon as I come off it, it came back and he said that would just keep happening. So I ended up um, being put on the list and they ordered the faecal microbiome transplant so basically what it is is um it's basically a poo transplant so i'd had loads of diarrhea anyway and they have to order it in advance because the hospital i was at doesn't have them in stock uh, so they ordered it from birmingham and it was cur couriered down on ice it was frozen like that's how it's kept um i was supposed to have it on the wednesday but the uh, sample went elsewhere to someone else don't know if it was more urgent than me or something um, so I had the procedure on the Thursday and all they did in the morning I had an enema um, I didn't have the bowel prep because my bowels were already shattered and empty so the enema just got rid of what was left in the bottom of the bowel um, I opted for sedation which I've had before and it's never worked and this time it didn't work either and the pain was unreal because my bowel was very sensitive and sore. So I had the gas and air, or Entinox as it's called. I highly recommend it. Like have five or six breathes in of that and you feel like you're drunk. So I was quite happy. Um, so they put the colonoscopy camera all the way up um, into the top of your colon to just check that there's nothing else there that's worrying. And then they fed this tube, which at first didn't fit, so I had to use a smaller one. Um, the tube is attached to the faecal transplant by this stage had defrosted um, which is what they need to happen to it and they put the tube all the way up to the top of the colon and they slowly start injecting through the tube the faecal donor so basically liquid poo but these donors have been um, they've been strictly screened in the UK they have like a checklist of um, all the things that the donor must or must not have um, obviously they have, and then like the sample is like triple quadruple checked that it's like safe I suppose um so as they 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 inject it and they slowly move the tube out of the colon so that the transplant gets like coated all through your colon all the way from the top all the way to your anus basically um and yeah it's kind of weird um and that was it really and they said oh right okay you can go back to your room now i was like wow okay so i was literally in the waiting area for not long at all uh, like recovery area i mean and i instantly was like oh my god my pain's gone because i had this constant dull achy crampy pain by then and that went and my nausea instantly went and i couldn't fit i was like this can't be working that quick so i had that and i went back to the ward and i felt a bit sleepy but great um my husband came in that day and all that and then the next day i felt great i started eating again i was like this is great and but the trouble is i saw these junior doctors the day after and i was like well what's the protocol on post fmt they didn't really know they were like looking googling trying to contact the hospital in birmingham to see if there was any protocol to follow there i said because i'd googled online about it um what diet you should have i presumed it was like either liquid or very bland um which is what online said but they just said just have a normal diet and i was like good job i didn't follow their advice um they gave me no post fmt information sheet i don't know if they do outside of the uk or other hospitals in the uk but adam brooks don't they don't tell you anything about what to expect symptoms wise what to do nothing um so friday i spent feeling fine and then saturday bam pain was back nausea was back no diarrhea thank goodness because if the diarrhea comes back you know it's failed but yeah the pain and the nausea was just bad 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 so i had to have another cannula put in more iv stuff because my stomach was just like nah so then it took about three or four days for that to ease and then finally because it was the weekend as well like that we in the uk 
hospitals are rubbish at the weekend like there's not as many doctors or nurses all the senior doctors aren't there it's the junior ones and they don't know what they're doing some of them like on this case um so yeah so on the monday morning i saw the senior doctor who actually did my procedure and he was like uh what symptoms are you get and i said nausea and pain oh that's normal he said it takes five to six weeks for your stomach to settle i was like why didn't they tell me so he allowed me to come home which i was so happy about because i could manage pain and nausea at home um i've now been home eight days and feeling so much better so what was really funny is that um on the wednesday i had a call from one of the junior doctors at the hospital saying that they were supposed to fill in a protocol form type thing for birmingham and they hadn't done it while i was in there <laughs> even though they'd had since the thursday and i went home the monday they hadn't done it so they asked me over the phone like what was your experience like how would you rate your experience and then i was like here's the thing it is not it's amazing the procedure but it's not well explained like i was told that i was having it i had to google to find out what exactly happened and then eventually i got to ask but the post fmt care was like zero it they didn't tell me anything at all so since i've been home um the first four days maybe uh the nausea was still there the pain but i've been taking paracetamol dispersible which is like the dissolvable ones um that's helped a lot and i have been forcing myself to eat even if i'm not hungry because it says that you should have fiber not too high in fiber now i have an added complication as well because i have multiple illnesses one of which is gastroparesis which basically my stomach muscles um, don't work very well they're very sluggish and they don't push food through so if I have something high in fibre it just sits there and makes me feel sick so I have to avoid that I also have mast cell activation disorder which means I am my stomach the way it affects it is that I produce too much histamine so I can't have any foods high in histamine and a lot of those foods are healthy foods uh, and what I've gathered from reading online um, is that uh, you've got to have a healthy diet, you've got to stay clear, obviously, from fast foods, canned foods, sugary foods. Sugar is like high up. I don't have sugary foods much. Um, and to be honest, it's really individual because some people might react to some things I don't and vice versa. But also, um, there's a debate whether to have probiotics because I've been told that um, kombucha is really good and I used to take that. But it's one of the things I've been told to avoid with my mass activation disorder because it's really high in histamine, anything fermented is. And also, um, I've got something called Biomel. I think it's a UK based thing, but it's a dairy free probiotic and I'm allergic to dairy. So <laughs> I'm already win-win because it says to avoid dairy for your stomach post FMT as well, or even post C. diff, even if you don't have it FMT. Um, yeah, so it's a chocolate favorite, it tastes amazing. And, but what, I'm a bit wary because when I came home the first time, I had them three days in a row and then I got this C. diff back. So I'm waiting a few weeks um, to make sure my stomach is healing. Now, the other thing is that I've looked online and this is the only way I know this, is because for the first four or five days, I had no bowel movements. I was constipated and I was so bloated and I was like, what's happened to my bowels? And no one could tell me. I couldn't even call the hospital to ask because they didn't know. Um, so I found that the C. diff uh, support group on Facebook is the only one that exists. It's based in America, but super useful because lots of people have had C. diff, FMTs, all sorts of stuff. And... Um, they said to just it's individual some people have probiotics some people don't um some people have different reactions it was just loads and loads of useful information um but i've read also today it says that the low fodmap diet is good which i've been on for years for my gastroparesis but you basically cut out foods that are high in sugar gluten dairy spices caffeine alcohol all that 
and then you gradually introduce it once your bowels sorted. Um, but yeah, I the, the, my bowels are getting there. Um, I'm only just coming up to two weeks post FMT. Um, so, f like I said, for the first four days I was constipated and I was like panicking, thinking, oh my god, my bowels are not working anymore. Um, but I would get quite a lot of poo, but it would be like rabbit droppings, like really hard, easy to to get out, but just loads of little round hard lumps. And I was like, okay, that's at least it's not diarrhea. That's the main thing. That's what I keep saying. And then I was like, I had that for a week and I was like, okay. And then yesterday, they, the stools, poos, whatever you want to call it, have started getting bigger, but not mushy, not diarrhea, no mucus. So that's good, I hope. But um, I'm, I've got a follow-up appointment with gastro. In, well, I haven't got the date yet, but it said four to six weeks after discharge to check whether how things are. But the other thing is they've got to check on my liver because when they mentioned when they discharged me that my ALT levels in my blood were high, which is something to do with your liver and with my autoimmune disease, Sjogren's, your, it can affect your liver, so can C. diff. But it's really interesting reading about C. diff on my support group because quite a lot of people haven't had the FMT and some people have just had the C. diff and have been in recovery and been fine. And others have been completely just constantly ill. And some people can't afford it because in America obviously you have insurance and all that. And we're really lucky in the UK to have the NHS who provide the FMT for free. Um, it is a last resort, I have to say. Um, I was really lucky I had Alan Brooks. If you're stuck in a hospital that is not like a big trauma centre or teaching hospital or something like that, you may end up battling C. diff over and over again. And my final thing I wanted to say about C. diff is I'm terrified for the future. I think most people are because I've been told that I can't have antibiotics for six to 12 months um, unless it's like life threatening, I need them because it will guarantee to bring it, the C. diff back because it'll upset the good bacteria in my stomach that's only just starting to regenerate. They describe C. diff, C. diff as like a weed that grows onto your bowel and clings on, like one of those sticky plants. And the good bacteria takes forever to like coat it, get back, regenerate and all this so yeah it's kind of nasty and horrible and painful and i honestly wouldn't wish this on anyone so there you go um obviously i'm not an expert i'm not a doctor i'm just someone who's been through it um if anyone wants to comment and i can contact you if you want to know more or if you've been through C. diff or had an FMT, I'd love to hear your experiences and let me know what country you're in because it really seems the UK is far behind because the reason we only got it in the last four years is America had it way before us. Um, but it's interesting that it is something that can also be used it's said to treat or even potentially cure IBD or Crohn's or anything like that. It's like, I can't even believe that. Um, for, I've heard some people also say that things like lactose intolerance have been cured which for me is like I'm not even dare try that yet I'll give it a few months but my IBS might be cured I don't know but I had I think I don't know if I'm more susceptible to it because all of last year I spent with diarrhea every day and they did all the tests, all the scopes, endoscopies, colonoscopies, sigmoidoscopies, stool samples, but they only were checking the faecal calprotectin, which is what they test for Crohn's. They thought I had colitis or Crohn's, but I don't think they ever tested for C. diff. And I didn't have the pain or the nausea or the lack of appetite, but I had diarrhea probably five or six times a day, every day. And maybe that's what it was because I haven't had diarrhea now for two weeks like this is amazing for me um so even so it might also have cured my c diff but also have cured whatever was wrong with me last year so anyway i'm rambling um i'm sure there's stuff i've missed out but if you want to know more like i say subscribe because i will do more updates on how my c diff goes how my recovery goes so please subscribe thank you everyone who has subscribed we've hit 40 subscribers which for me is great because i'm a small channel 
um, and click the bell notification uh, so you know when I next post an update because I'll do one probably every week uh, for my CDF because things can change and I haven't hit the 10 day mark yet. <laughs> Last time I was home for 10 days, it's eight so far, so pray that I don't go back into hospital. So, because I think I'll go mad. <laughs> All right then, speak to you soon, bye.